Hey guys, welcome back to Max Planes to Dawn of War Unification. Today I have another faction guide prepared for you, this time for the Dark Elder. I had one before for the previous version, but I do a, a completely complete new video for this, this version. So the Dark Elder, you can think of them as your evil elder. So um, they share some traits, but uh, not all. They are fast and have high DPS, but they do not share the high range of elder. They have for the most part rather short range um, and are frail as well. So pretty class cannon, but uh, short range. So it's really um, kind of difficult to uh, make them work sometimes, but if you can enable all their abilities in the right time, in the right spot, you're gonna deal a lot of damage. They are generally, um, how should I say, early game focus, especially in vanilla. The later tiers aren't as good there, but uh, unification does kind of circumvent it a bit, so giving them some new choice for tier two and tier three to overcome their uh, quote unquote weakness in these tiers. But more we will find out as this guide goes along. And here we are again in the safe game we had this fallen city all but ruins because of the Elder uh, <laughs> raids. <laughs> I always try to have a little thematic map, map, so this is the theme of this one. So before we head through the abilities and uh, buildings and whatnot, we will always talk about the r resources and unit caps. The resources for requisition and power are pretty much standard. You get uh, requisition from capturing points, building listing posts, getting the upgrades. Same with power, you get your standard power generators, your bigger generators and also upgrades for it. But what is special about them is their unique resource. It is souls. Um, you gather souls by using abilities of your slave or one of your vehicles later on to harvest them from dead bodies. Dead bodies will get a little um, purple glow around them and this means there is a soul to be harvested. Um, it can be harvested by this ability. So this time the worker will go over there and harvest it. It's not only by corpses from enemies and of friends. There's also an ability, um, uh, the slave chamber upgraded with a torture pit, I think it's called. It will generate corpses over time. So you have some backup if you don't want to put your workers in middle, in midst of the battle. Um, yeah, that's a special resource for them. You will need it for their global abilities, uh, which we will talk later about. Let's talk about the unit caps. You start off with eight uh, squad cap and three vehicle cap. This suggests you have access to vehicles early on, which is true. Um, you get plus three, plus three for all of your torture pits, or what are they called exactly? Slave chambers, they are uh, plus three, plus three. And you get um, also one time plus zero plus four for your Titan building, which is the Shadow Gate. Okay, let's talk about the global abilities as we are here. There are six in total. They are, these are tier locked. The first one are tier one, then you have tier two abilities and finally tier three abilities. The one is Piercing Vision. This grants a singular unit or a, a how should I say, a squad or unit, it can also be vehicles, um, true sight, detection. This is basically your only detection you have in tier one, apart from, uh, let's say, listing posts. Okay, you got turrets if you um, added, enabled one uh, special condition there, but yeah, in generally speaking, you uh, lack detection. It costs 40 souls and you start off with 50, I think. I think it's 50. So you can use it once uh, before you need to harvest some souls. So if you are facing an enemy that uh, is has a lot of infiltrated units, for example, uh, early on, like for example, enemy Dark Elder or Tau or Elder, you want to get a torture pit with um, this, uh, a slave chamber with the torture pit add-on rather early on, so you can harvest some souls to use this ability um, more than once. The other T1 ability is Screams of the Damned, which is a 
Global Morale Damaging Ability. It damages enemy morale as well as reducing the maximum enemy morale. This can be tricky to use because you want to use it when the enemy morale is about to break, but you cannot really, let's say, finish it. Um, otherwise, if you just click it in the middle of nowhere, not all units around will break. Um, I think it first reduces the maximum morale and then deals the morale damage. For all these very specific uh, infos, I, I am almost certain that there will be a post uh, from Neon, who is the Dark Elder expert in the Discord, so he will let you know what I tell you wrong here <laughs> in the comments. So best used when you are uh, in a fight and are about to win or at least about to break the enemy morale. Very good, for example, against enemy guardsmen or especially conscripts or units like that. Then you have your tier 2 ability, first one, Rent Soul. That's a single target ability, causes damage and disables abilities, really strong damage um, as well. And then you have a little AoE ability, Corrosion. Um, corrosion is, uh, it doesn't show here. Here, you have a little AoE, which um, debuffs enemies in the first circle, where enemies walking in, doesn't matter if they walk out, doesn't matter, the initial circle counts, which is a little misleading, but they have their armor reduced and their damage taken uh, increased, so it, it's basically two things doing the same in the end, it increases the damage the enemy units uh, take. So really a strong ability if used correctly, like you're about to assault in position or you're in the midst of a fight and have an enemy blob, use this and you will melt the enemy. Your tier four ability, uh, tier four, tier three abilities are rekindle rage, which um, is used on a squad or commander, I think, and uh, refreshes all of its abilities. I think there's some shenanigans going on with the witch, um, drugs here but I, I'm sure uh, Neon will know about. And then the f last one, this is the name name ability of the <laughs> of the last add-on for Dawn of War, it's the Soulstorm which is a really big AoE. Um, you can also um, control it a bit and all units in the area um, take damage. It is distributed by uh, every, how should I say, four ticks a second and it has a duration of 20 seconds, so quite a lot of damage ticks. Just to give you an overview, the rough um, damage uh, for different unit types. Infantry in general takes about 440 damage if they stand the 20 seconds within. Uh, vehicles only 175 and demons about 400. So it's best used against infantry blobs, of course. Um, low health infantry blobs, but in general it does really good damage and you see the cooldown is there, but you can uh, use it multiple times if you have enough resources for it. Okay, these are the global abilities, now we will jump over to the buildings. The buildings are over here, you have your um, HQ which can be uh, add-on uh, twice, you could say, you had an add-on twice for tearing up to tier uh, 2 and tier 3. In tier 1 you have actually three different buildings. You have a Hall of Blood for infantry and a Dark Foundry for vehicles, as you can get vehicles in tier 1 as well, so you have to uh, can choose between them. And if you have one of, each, one of those, you can then build a Hemonculus Laboratory, which is your research lab for all your infantry researches. In, um, this includes more damage for your um, uh, units, more health in tier 2, uh, your commander weapon upgrades and whatnot. In tier 2 you can add the Witch Guild Arena which is another research building but it also grants access to uh, various units inside of your production buildings and also functions as a research building for commander abilities which I have all researched here but also the um, more or less standard um, uh, general commander upgrade. If you have uh, tier 3 finished, you can then build your soul cage with functions as a tier 4 building, has no other use um, than bring you to tier 4 and allow more units. And then once you have that, you can build your titan production building, which is your shadow gate. Um, for your defense or let's say yeah, defense abilities, you have your 
Um, listening posts. The listening posts can be upgraded twice to do a lot of damage against infantry, but have an additional add-on here, which you can see here, which adds uh, twin linked last cannons to them. So you have then four four linked. Uh, what is it called? Not shredder. Um, shuriken. Would it be for elder? Um, these anti-infantry. Um, how should I say guns and get uh, anti-vehicle guns uh, with the extra upgrade. So you get a lot of uh, defensive damage. You could say. If you enabled the Dark Elder turret victory condition, you will also get uh, the Ghost Tower of Anguish, which is an anti infantry tower which can be upgraded with Dark Lances to be anti-vehicle only. So your listening post will give you anti-everything, you could say. Defensive-wise, you could also upgrade your Slave Chamber with this little uh, cage over here, which gives them the... Um, give me a second. Uh, maybe I need to rebuild it to read the description if it also gives you some um, standard horrifying discarnage that demoralizes enemies. Okay, so it um, uh, does some uh, morale damage but also gives you access to this the soul shock, sacrifices the life of a slave, sends us to blast of pure psychic, psychic energy, damages nearby enemy squads. So a little uh, psychic blast here with a cooldown. Uh, does cost nothing but deals some damage around it so really uh, handy if they you fight um, melee units also as uh, it, it described here it, um, drains enemy morale as well uh, you do not have minefields but if you ex uh, enabled hazard and booby traps you have uh, special cages um, which when get destroyed uh, leave out a non-controllable unit of warp beasts which is kind of interesting you are not able to build them normally. For economy, yes, uh, you have the standard plasma generators and thermal plasma generators. Nothing more about that. Um, interestingly, um, all the units in here, all the units, all the buildings can, uh, that um, will be summoned by themselves. The unit uh, just need to tick them and then can, can run away. Just, okay, it's death mode, but you, you would place it here and it will would be, um, Built itself, you could say, which is special, very special in the Manila, but not as special in Unification. But um, there are only a handful of factions that can have it, like a Chaos Demon and Thousand Suns, I think. Is. Yeah, Chaos Demons and Thousand Suns will have this as well. Okay, these are the buildings out of the way. Let's jump to the units. The builder I have talked a bit as well. Uh, before he can uh, summon the buildings you could say he does not really build it but he ticks it and it builds himself he can repair and he can harvest souls yeah so primary used for building you will not need more than one or maximum two because um, you you will walk them where they build and then you can walk them away um, they aren't really cheap either so you don't want to have uh, more than you really need um, in the other way around, they are prime targets for enemy uh, harassment. If you kill one, you take out 75 re um, requisition, which is quite a lot of income. Jumping over to the hero units, your first and major hero is your Archon here. Your Archon has a revenue of incubi, incubi. He gets one in tier one, and then there are three upgrades which give um, the Incubi increased sets, I think, and uh, increases the amount of Incubi he can have. There are one standard ability, this Animus Vitae, which is a stun ability, and you can research the Crucible of Malediction, which is a Confuse ability, so the, the affected squad will fight each other, dealing damage to each other and also not dealing damage to you. With Hero Walk, you enabled, he will get this menacing mask and whatnot. Uh, you see a lot of health and whatnot. Um, the mask gives them morale drain around and um, there's also haywire bombs you can research which function very much like your haywire bombs from your elder warp spiders for example so dealing damage against vehicles or buildings not sure actually if they can uh, target to aircraft as melter bombs cannot target aircraft which i learned the hard way is um, the another manila commander you have here is your hemunculus hemunculus he is, um, has some really uh, menacing melee and ranged weapons. Um, he does quite a fair, quite a good amount of morale damage as well. If you're facing, for example, Legion of the Damned or some Chaos 
a demon faction so you want to have him on the field. He also has the ability to place down a torture amp which um, slows down enemies movement and attack speed which is really handy. Really low in life but the enemy needs to get close first to kill it. He then later on can get the stinger which causes damage over time to an enemy. Um, enemies that die while the infinitus of the person will explode causing damage to nearby squads. Really interesting. And the last one is soul destruction causes the souls of nearby fallen troops to explode for a final blast of destruction. So this is more of a uh, corpse bomb ability you would know if you played uh, any necromancer in any uh, uh, MOBA or whatnot in any, uh, how should I say, MMO or so there is a corpse bomb. Or for example, uh, what is it called again? Diablo 2, where you have also this corpse explosion. Um, two new commanders is, are added in the last update, which is first your Medusa. -E. The Medusa there looks really interesting. Look at her. She is said to be just, I don't know, an, an animated body, you could say. She can be attached. She um, can also possess enemy infantry squads. Um, this has a tendency to crash the game and at game ending I think you need to do some special things like uh, go to the stat screens first, not uh, go out and then restart the game afterwards. It's a little, how should I say, scar finicky um, as all possession abilities are I have to say. So you can use it to take control of an enemy squad. It's interesting it also takes down enemy leaders to the squad which is um, yeah, very much needed. And by herself, she is okay-ish combatant. And also this um, Possess Enemy Squad has quite a wind-up time, so you need to be careful when to use it. It can only be used against infantry and uh, also not... Uh, it says... What does it say exactly? Um, elite Heavy Infantry, which basically is distinguished by the armor type. Um, so armor type, infantry, um, low, med, med, low, medium and high infantry can be taken and also heavy infantry medium can be taken. Heavy infantry high, which is your terminators for example, cannot be possessed. Commanders of course also not. And then you have this uh, Lilith Hesperex, which is a named character I was not aware of. She's a kind of a witch, has um, this ability here. What does it again? Natural perfection. Ah, maximizes her damage. All her slashes strike through, so she has um, perfect accuracy um, hitting most papa also increased speed also increases the encounters with the challenger and cannot escape her. So she, so she is like the enemy that is engaged in melee cannot uh, run away basically. Um, this is I'm not sure if this is um, how should I say uh, how should I uh, explain it um, also given to the squad attached to her, but we will find out. I will attach her to a squad later and then we will use it <coughs> to see if they got like a little visual indicator. Um, before we go on to the units, I wanted to show you the Medusa in action. So I had nicely some Chaos Marines that just stand here. Just to show you that the Commander's Guild, I have attached a um, Chaos Lord here and a Chaos Sorcerer here. So I built the Medusa here. Um, and now she can take over, for example, this uh, cultist squad. It has quite a lot of wind up time, the commander is killed and you take over the squad. So it looks really powerful and overpowered, but it is really is not. You can walk around, you cannot reinforce it because you have these, all these requirements, you cannot use abilities. Um, but the weapons, it, they have, the, it um, sticks to it. Sadly, I cannot delete this unit, so I need to switch over to chaos and um, kill them quickly so I can build another Medusa here. And then I will show you that I can, can also take this over this chaos space marines but not uh, for example uh, the obliterators so now it is taken care of we will take again on hold switch over build another one. You, now you can also see the corpses I told you earlier. Um, this can not be used on demons, just wanted to show you. Not against these obliterators, but could use on chosen and we will use it once again against these chaos marines and 
show you once again that the leader here, the Chaos Sorcerer, will be killed in the process. There you go. Okay. We are now just switch over and allow the uh, <laughs> enemy to kill these units while we are talk about infantry now. Infantry is uh, interesting in many ways. Your first capital units, which can be also a pretty good combatant, is your Mantrax squad has no leader, but can um, get infiltration in tier 1 and also some health and damage upgrade in tier 2, making them really potent, uh, and at least until tier 2. The other squads you have um, available in tier 1 in from your Hall of Blood is your Warrior Squad. Your Warrior Squad is your you could say your general range squad, um, very fast, high DPS, very frail, gets wherever with their leader the uh, Terrafix Grenade, which uh, increases, uh, reduces enemy sight range and maybe even does some uh, morale damage, I think. Yeah, de here, devastates enemy morale, it states. I'm not sure if it also um, affects enemy accuracy but um, kind of useful grenade. Uh, if you build a Dark Foundry as well, you can get Shredder Rifles and Dark Metal Plasters in Tier 1, which sounds really strong. It was really strong in the previous version. It got nerfed. It's still, um, let's say, potent, but not as overpowered as before. The amount of these weapons will be increased if you research um, your Soul Seeker ammunition from 2 to 4 per squad. The other Tier 1 uh, squad are the Hellions, built from your dark uh, foundry. These are your jump squad, very, very, um, how should I say, costly to reinforce, but very strong, have ranged and melee uh, possibilities with their attached leader, the Heliarch. They can use a tracking device, which gives you a vision of the enemy squad for quite some, quite a while. Pretty useful if you have like enemy commander you want to uh, follow or an enemy jump squad, for example, or so you want to know where it is. In tier 2, you get access to your Scorch squad. Your Scorch squad is a jump, ranged jump squad as well, with uh, the main damage is anti infantry in the beginning, but can also get uh, dark lances, but in also heat lances and haywire blasters. The haywire blasters are limited to two because they're really strong. Long range have really anti titan uh, capabilities here, so very strong AV all around. Heat lances are also good against, um, how should I say, uh, buildings and vehicles. So um, they are a little slower to fire, it seems, and then dark lances can jump and yeah, really useful, really mobile unit. Um, I like it. Range is okay ish to very good. Um, the other tier 2 units are your witches and the witches are really one of the units you really always want to have really because they are kind of good in melee and ranged. Um, it uh, looks underwhelming but what makes or breaks the unit is the combat drugs. These drugs are really insane. It increases, it, it makes, it uh, affects squads around the unit as well if you click it. It's uh, not the biggest AOE but you can see it uh, um, will effect units around it, it will make them morale immune, will increase their movement and attack speed. So you have morale, damage, immunity and increased damage. This is similar to, let's say, your um, IG execute, but not losing a model. Cooldown is relatively low, but it's, uh, I think, 10 seconds and 40 seconds cooldown, something like that. Um, really strong, really strong. Um, always have one or two uh, once you're tier two. I will see uh, if Lilith is attached here, if this... Okay, it seems only to affect her, it seems, yes, not not a squad. But she is a witch, you can you can clearly tell. Um, tier 2 also gives you uh, the availability of these racks. These racks are really, um, um, how should I say, your bread and butter when you want to go into melee in tier 2, because these guys have a lot of health, they have a leader in tier 3, the Echo Thists. Um, increases the maximum morale and morale recovery of the Rex she leads. Um, yeah, also very uh, special leader unit. Gets some special weapons if you get the weapon upgrades. Look at her bold head. Um, these guys have a special trait. I'm not sure what this is called. Um, power from pain it's called. And the power from pain has some interesting 
um, passive bonuses once their health depletes they um, have a chance to just ignore damage their uh, charge range gets increased they do more damage they take less morale damage and will deal more morale damage they have different uh, thresholds for all the disabilities and it's per model I think mm. you can see all these ranges when it activates and whatnot in the unification wikia on the dark elder page if you are really interested in some hard fact numbers um, these are all your infantry squads for tier 2 and tier 3 you get access to your true born um, which is your high elite warrior kind of unit um, it's ranged it has a dracon leader it also gets the terror effects grenades also has um, shredders and dark metal blasters similar to what warriors get but also had access to splinter cannons which are really strong against infantry and demons but also dark lenses to get some anti-vehicle out uh, dark metal blasters are also anti-vehicles i forgot to tell you have a small aoe and are kind of what is it called effect is all targets morale actual damage is proportional to target size which just means um not target size but target armor type uh, meaning that it does quote unquote more damage against units with a higher armor class which is interesting and one of the newest addition as well are these grotesques which are finally enough uh, voiced by Kaldaris you will not notice it because it is so distorted or, it, or maybe you notice because you know him really well but these grotesques are mad they have ranged in melee but um, best used in melee also have these uh, a death um, what are they called again pain power from pain ability so the same pathic passives i think but they do not have morale so they are unbreakable and are heavy infantry but they are get really mad with their tier 4 upgrade which is called demonic infusion research just look at it um, they have high regeneration health regeneration by themselves but this their life also increases by this infusion so does their already high re regeneration really really strong and what is also really strong the second line they are now permanently transformed into warp and he's gaining them the crate the armor of greater demons from high infantry from heavy infantry high i assume to um greater demon armor so th this is a big upgrade for the survivability so they will just not die they are not really cheap either and limited to one but when you're tier three get them out when you're tier four give them the upgrade and they will not die which is really uh, what you want, kind of, because uh, all your units, apart from these two, you could say, from these two are really fragile, which is okay, uh, but um, these are your two tanks, you could say, um, especially by their passive ability. So um, these are all limited to one, but you want to have them out um, as, as early as you can. Both of them are really high on the power cost as well, um, so you want to make sure that you have enough power in general so you can kind of not get vehicles and them out because you run out of power mm, there are also two demon like or demon units which is first your chimera also known as the warp beast primary, uh, previously these are melee only units um, which are really good in melee for what they do but if their morale is broken they turn rampaged so you cannot control them and they also attack your own units um, if you get their Beastmaster, they can get an ability Tame War Beast, which restores the morale, which is kind of a reliability, and you can control the Chimera pack uh, again. There's also this monstrous Chimera. These are both uh, tier 3 units, which is basically a really big version of uh, Chimera. This is also melee only, um, demon armor high, I think really good damage against uh, heavy infantry vehicles and commanders so if you want to take down a big um, let's say Primark for example get one of this out and uh, send it over there it will not win but it will deal a lot of damage so with uh, the infantry and the um, cameras the demons out of the way I will jump over to vehicles but I forgot something to tell you all the infantry and all the commander are affected by one upgrade I have here already which is Poison Blades. Poison Blades in a technical will adds a melee weapon but on a more basic understanding way all your 
uh, units, infantry units will now deal poison damage in melee doing like damage over time. I, I think it's uh, different from each unit. Um, let's say a mandrake will not deal as much uh, poison damage as a wreck, but in general it's all poison damage. Uh, I'm not also not really sure about how it stacks, but uh, in general it deals uh, good enough damage that you basically always want this upgrade if you have melee uh, infantry units or melee commanders. But now really to the vehicles. Your tier 1 vehicle is your Reaver jet bike. The jet bikes start off, let's say, kind of, I don't want to say weak because they are one of the stronger openers, but they are fast with 400 health, um, not the... Uh, how should I say, not uh, tankiest. The damage looks really high here, but um, only if they're stationary. So their range is okay, um, um, but the real damage they only do when they are stationary. When they're on the move, they have only like 10% accuracy or something like that. But there's an upgrade in tier two, which increases their accuracy um, and especially the accuracy on the move. So this is a must have upgrade if you've got um, some jet bikes over from tier one there's also a vehicle um health increase upgrade which is also affected uh, also affects uh, reaver jet bikes there's also like one specific unit that is not affected by it uh, neon will probably tell you in the comments it's probably one of the flyer units in tier two you have access to your radar the radar is your transport vehicle for dark elder has an a uh, dark lens attached to it but the damage of it is really low overall not the best vehicle damage wise but you can transport um, units inside and these units will also fire out due to the hard how should I say the hard um, locked hard kept how should I say what is again um, hard coded um, how should I say way of disability um, this will not um, how should I say support new squads or weapons so you can only use vanilla uh, squads and even your warrior squads if they got the upgrades um, they will still fire the standard um, um, rifles because it is really hard coded you cannot change it um, the other tier 2 unit is one your talos which is a melee skimmer as well look at this menacing little thingies he has this drill jesus i don't want to get near this guy this guy um uh, very good in melee as I, I stated before but um, can also harvest souls the thing about him he gets more souls out of one body and that also means he harvests souls faster I think and uh, the factor is 2.6 or 2.7 so it's really um, takes takes a lot of more souls out of uh, one out of one uh, body the Hick also can exit this, uh, get this uh, active ability Wildfire, which fires some units around of him. I'm not sure if it's worth to have, but if you're in the midst of a battle, you may click it. You need to research it before. Another tier 2 unit is your Venom. Your Venom is really good anti infantry, can carry squads, but they will not shoot out, but can also get a heat lens instead of the. What is it called? Replaces the Splinter Cannon. You have a Splinter Cannon on top and some also some anti-infantry rep, mm, weaponry on the sides at the front and you can replace this by heat lens giving you some anti-vehicle and anti-building damage so really versatile limited to two however cannot jump this unit here the radar can jump one of the uh, the only unit that can jump and it's also a special jump if it jumps it uh, makes a big knockback around it and do, does quite the morale damage as well uh, there are kind of plans or ones um, that all the skimmers can use this ability, but it's also very uh, hard coded, so I'm not sure if this will be anytime soon. And then we have also an amalgamation of different skimmers, late tier skimmers. You have your, um, where is it? Your Ravager, which is your tier 4 unit, I think. Yeah, tier 4, you can have up to two of these. They start off with anti infantry units, but can dis disintegrate us. No, they start off with anti vehicle. I think your yeah, anti-vehicle units here uh, uh, abilities ah, weapons default weapon is effective against vehicles and building but can this get these disintegrators which are good against infantry which changes all their three guns eventually um, there's they all cost the same um, yeah no it's all the same weapon you will see that it changes here now to a disintegrator 
Your relic unit is your dice of destruction, which is basically a ravager on steroids. Just look at all the different weapons here. It's affected against infantry, it states, but I think it's pretty much good against everything. You have this uh, little guy here, who is it called? Led by us, Trubeal Vect himself. So this is the guy sitting here, has two slaves uh, driving around with him if he uh, feels like it. <laughs> and <laughs> he, um, this has two abilities. One passive ability you see here, um, which decreases range damage taken, which is really nice before the very frail um, units of Dark Elder in general, and also has this Dark Size, which does um, deal damage in a little, how should I say, half circle. Um, not sure if it also does knockback, but you always want to use it if uh, if you have the, uh, the possibility, because it's really uh, high damage as well. Some of your tier 4 things that got added is the Reaper here. Yeah, the Reaper is your anti-Titan unit, um, vehicle aircraft demon, uh, really strong, what does it say, very fast movement, Titan Hunter, reinforced armor, so your Titan Hunter. And then the new unit, I'm not really sure what this does, it's a Rampage, let's see what it says. Heavy support skimmer vehicle, even faster than the Ravager, um, better armored and has an energy shield, interesting, so um, protective I wanted Quadling Darklands Splinter Cannon. So basically good against everything you could say. So um, also limited to one, not a Titan, uh, but not a Titan. Then you have also Flyers. Dark Elder are known for their raids. So you have a lot of Flyers. So tier 2 Raven, which has um, a Dark Lances and what I call their, their standard anti-infantry weaponry. Before it can only uh, use the Dark Lances against air, but now can also target the ground, making it a little bit better. Their health isn't the greatest, their speed is really fast, and they have this short circuit ability, which stuns uh, vehicles or buildings, which is kind of handy, limited to three, I think. And also tier three, but uh, needs a relic, is your Razor Wing Jet Fighter, which has um, weaponry against building vehicles and aircraft, and has one of these passives, um, what is it called? Employs pre-installed night shield, making it virtually undetectable, thus of offering damage protection from ranged uh, weapons. So maybe, so it's probably not affected by the night shield's ability research, but it has some damage resistance of ranged weapons by default. All your two Titan Titan class units are flyers. So you have the tier one Titan class units, which is a white dragon phoenix. Um, which has also this pre-installed night shields and is really good probably against everything and then you have your void raven bomber you which you know from uh, version 5.9.1 uh, it probably got uh, upgraded in um, life a bit has also this pre pre-installed night shields um, passive can uh, switch um, or can how should i say toggles ability that switches the armor types if it's off it has um, anti uh, anti uh, vehicle armor and if you have it on it has anti infantry armor it also shows in this little icon here now I'm good against vehicles now I'm good against infantry and this is the void mine which is one of bomb which does I think kind of random damage from okay it deals some damage to it almost one shots my uh, HQ um, you can only use it once per void raven bomber and it costs quite a lot of power as well so it's now disabled forever um, let's just find out if it's forever or only uh, per one raven okay so you need to would need to build another void raven every void raven bomber is only equipped with one void mine which you have to pay extra as well so it's a really big boom ability for late game scenarios let's say uh, FFA or big team games you can use it uh, for Good effect. Oof. These are all the units out of the way. Now we will jump into the tech trees where I will show you or, or tell you a bit about the different tier strength of Dark Elder and what you want to focus in which tier, for example. So see you in the document. And here we are in the tech tree document. Um, I will not go over every uh, building, but you can see that you can your Hall of Blood and your uh, Dark Foundry in tier 1 already, and this gives you access to Hellions and uh, Jetbikes or the Archon and the Warriors respectively. 
A lot of upgrades from your homunculus lab are also available early on, which brings me to the first, let's say, power spike, you could say. First power spike for um, Dark Elder is tier 1.5. You can get a really strong tier 1.5 out um, if you either go for um, jet bikes or even for infantry. You can get your Archon and Warriors out with uh, increased damage, your Archon or Mandrakes with poison weaponry. Uh, leaders you can also get into 1.5 for your warriors which you can equip with splinter um, cannons and if you build a dark foundry as well you can get these special weapons for your warriors as well so a heavy tier one is really strong um, but what is also really strong is the early tier two because you get access to um, the racks you get access to um, your um, transporters and in tier one uh, 2.5 you could say you get access to uh, witches and uh, venoms respectively depending on if you go infantry or vehicles so really strong in that sense the wrecks by themselves are really strong especially if you get then the armor upgrade as well um tier three is also okay ish i mean you get uh the war piece and your warriors as a tier three is, is still very good if you look at all the units presented here you get the ravens which are now uh, better because they can uh, attack ground you get these uh, two different kind of war beasts your um true born and the racing jack fighter as well as the grotesques so tier three is still very strong it kind of gets south is tier four because your your revenger and your dice of destructions aren't the uh, strongest of units but it got a little mitigated you could say um, by having this upgrade for your grotesques and of course because of your new titan class units um, which are also skimmers that do not need um, let's say are not a titan class unit but a really good one needs a critical location and the other one needs a relic and yeah okay relic and uh, critical location but this is this one your um, titan hunter and your two titans here your titan flyers really expensive but worth the cost because they're really mobile uh, upgrades is really uh, pretty much standard your get all your abilities upgrades in tier one actually for and tier two for your leaders um, this is your special thingy i told you if you enabled hazards and booby traps it's a cage has the same icon as the slave chamber and if it is killed it gets this uh, special uh, warp beast squad out um yeah and if you enable the uh, turret uh option or playing survival you get these turrets as well all your hero war gear is now in the listening post which is true for all vanilla factions in this update which is really nice not in your infantry or research production so if you have it here where you have a lot of um how should i say spare space as well looking over the units you can see as well that you can get a lot with the homunculus lab you can get your leaders for your warriors and your hellions and then of course you need the homunculus lab for basically all your leaders but also the respective tier you build the unit in so it doesn't really affect you one exception is uh, your rex where your leader is locked behind a uh, later tier other than that you can get the leader in the same tier as you are already in your honor guards um, are pretty much similar but not in campaign you have a uh, leader of squads you could say so these are your leaders from your warriors the leaders from your hellions you get also one incubi squad without a um Archon and you get a homunculus which has access to all of his abilities from the get-go which is really handy um, Which is also what is also interesting that you get a special warp beast squad, which is only one warp beast uh, I think uh, and not a tamer the, the warp beast leader So you it will lose control if it loses morale and you have no way to um, Get back and one very special thing you get in survival, which is this thingy here i forgot the name of it is called the tempest uh, which is basically i think an elder unit normally but it's let's say it's rated a rated elder unit you could say so um interesting honor guard units in the sense that you have kind of leader like units even the um 
all these names are really hard to remember. These Scorchs are leaders, so they don't need to have a squad leader. They are all really strong, can get the weapon upgrades, however. Even the witches are uh, squad leaders only. Okay, in terms of detection, um, it is your... Ah, your homunculus does detect, I didn't know that, um, which is one source of early detections. All your commanders, uh, apart from the Archon, the Archon will get a detection. I thought you get detection from an upgrade, but it seems he doesn't. So you want to have one of the other commanders, um, or the global ability, of course, or you get uh, the witches, where they are here. The witches are your detector unit. But this chimera seems to detect as well. Is it called chimera? It is called Greater War Beast here. It has a special name. Um, it's also a detector unit. Okay, now we will jump over to the build order document. And as uh, you have two buildings which can produce units in tier one, you have quite a different openers. There are eight openers from which at least four to five are viable, but I will tell you more in a second. And here we are on the build order document. Um, yeah, your first build order I will always call standard is which is a kind of, you have something to fight in tier one, but I want to get to tier two in a good time. Um, this quote unquote standard is probably not the best way to play Dark Elder because I told you already that they are really focused on the early game. Your T1.5 is really strong. So the standard, uh, quote unquote standard opener might or might not be the best. You get two mandrakes, two capping stuff. You don't want to get another lead, uh, builder because, uh, you don't really need because the buildings build yourself. You get a Heart of Blood and a Gen Warrior Squad and your Archon with the Incubi to have some melee. Um, possibilities, you, then you will add a second warrior squad and a plasma generator um, so you can upgrade one or two LPs before going to tier 2. Which is a really strong opener if you want to call Hall of Blood is this one, heavy tier 1. It's In the beginning it's the same, but um, after your warrior you add, or yeah, after warrior you will add at some point the homunculus lab which allows you to get the homunculus out, uh, the mantrake, um, Infiltration ability and leaders for your warriors. The leaders then can get the splinter cannons. You can get more damage with these uh, soul seeker ammunition. Get your archon out, uh, upgrade out, so you can get another incubi and poison blades. Do this in the order you prefer. If you want to have a stronger archon, you want to have the the first two upgrades. If you want to have stronger warriors, you want to have the first two. If you lose a Mantrake squad, replace it with uh, another Warrior squad. Uh, build enough power generators so you can get to tier 2. Um, another opener is Hellion Harris, also really um, good in the right hands. You want to get two Mantrakes, your um, Dark Foundry and a Gen, and then you get two Hellions out. Don't reinforce them too much, only as much that's, as you need to survive, to make them able to survive. And yeah, Harris the heck out of the opponent while you t take your points and then get to tier two in good amount of time. You want to add your homunculus lab on your way to tier two because w it will allow you to get either um, river jet bikes with upgrades or if you add a witch called arena in tier two, which uh, will allow you to have venoms out, which are really strong. Then it's a jetpack opener. It's kind of similar to the first one you see here. You get two mantrakes, but then you get um, your dark foundry and a generator and only one hellion. You always want to want to have a hellion. You do not want to skip this hellion. This hellion gives you so much. It gives you capping uh, ability. It gives you, if you want some melee um, uh, support for your jetpacks, it gives you a Harris possibility. So you always want to have this hellion. You do not really need to reinforce them. Um, it once the dark foundry is up, immediately build your homunculus lab. And once this, once this is up, you want to get jet bikes. Your first three pop cap will allow you to get three. Then you want to add a slave chamber and of course get this um, upgrade that gives you souls, so you can start harvesting souls. And then you will get uh, more jet bikes. You normally want to stop at six. Um, and then get to tier 2. If you can keep them alive, then get the upgrades in tier 2 and go from there. 
get the upgrades and also get um, some venoms uh, to support them or uh, some melee units um, yeah you don't need to really switch over to the heart of blood if you do not swim in requisition another cool opener is the manta ray swim especially against uh, factions that lack good detection you basically get all your supply full of mandrakes um, get a hold of blood mainly to get their infiltration research up get a power generator to have enough power to upgrade your points and yeah uh, the, the squads that is, are in fight you want to reinforce uh, later you want to get a monkey slap for the poison blades um, then they are dealing quite uh, a lot of damage and then head to tier 2 um, if they are still alive in tier 2 get their tier 2 health and damage upgrade so they can stay viable on the way to tier 2 you can also add the dark foundry so you can add vehicles uh, once you're tier 2 another interesting one uh, only kind of made available in um, unification is the warrior spam the warrior spam before was really strong uh, to the point it was overpowered but now it's in a good spot I think it's not really good against um, enemies that are beefy let's say for example a uh, thousand suns um, most space marines uh, uh, factions uh, most notably imperial fists it's not really good but at um, against factions with like um, low health models like ig uh, and stuff like that it's really good because this shadow rifle here does really good damage against infantry so the point of this is you only get one um, man trick but uh, two warriors you will get the rest of your resources in a generator and a dark foundry the reason for the dark foundry of course is that you can get the shredder rifles here you will then later on add a third warrior so you have more uh, uh, squads with shredder rifles and once you have the homunculus lab you want to get a leader on these squads get the so seeker ammunition so you can get more shredder rifles on your squads and also get the splinter cannon upgrade so your leader hits harder the leader has the same range as the splinter cannons here now what is splinter shredder rifles so really neat in that regard um i'm not sure where this why there is this um slave here i don't think it makes sense to have a slave here i will probably change this because it's um resources you don't want to spend here yeah, I will um, delete this um, and upload it again. Doesn't make sense to have a second slave here. Yeah, get some generators as the usual and get to tier two. Um, in tier two, you want to invest more in your infantry. So you want to get the armor upgrade uh, because you already have quite a lot of infantry. You want to have the armor upgrade for the infantry. You can think of adding your Archon as well to have some melee uh, capabilities and get the upgrades for the Archon. Or even better adding some witches there's always the possibility of a tier 2 rush which means only getting two cappers then one of your two buildings that make you um, um, is how should I say allow you to get to tier 2 um, get your some power generators up and then head to tier 2 if you have the hall of blood you only need one if you have your um, dark fund you will need two to uh, we have a quick tier 2 this isn't as strong as it was before because your venom does now require the hemunculus lab and the witch cult arena before this was the way to get a quick venoms out that could uh, kill a lot of units the venoms by themselves didn't got nerfed but their attack requirements did so you cannot rush them anymore one interesting thing you can do if you have the hero walk gear enabled is you can play a hero archon build which is just a meme kind of build but I, I played it against the AI and even made it work against Necrons uh, really fun um, two mandrakes hall of blood generator and get only the Archon out with incubi and from your first listening post because this is it's a listening post normally I don't have the listening post in here but from your listening post you will get the two Archon upgrades this one increases health regeneration and whatnot and this one as well so making them really beefy you want to add the homunculus lab to get uh, the incubi upgrade you have another incubi and your poison blade so you have some poison melee and then head to tier 2 where you can even get more hero upgrades and can add the racks and whatnot so really <laughs> meme -y build but I I like it um, okay as usual to finish up this guide I have a really cool replay prepared for you so see you in a second 
And here we are in the replay where I play as Dark Elder versus Kukai who plays the Thousand Suns. We will stick with my view and before you say, oh, you only show your replays, I actually tried to find some uh, replays from another player for Dark Elder, but um, as this, the new patch is relatively, how should I say, new out, um, there aren't a lot of replays there yet and not a lot of people are playing um, Dark Elder indeed. So that's my game again. Um, as you see the opener, I have a Dark Foundry opener. I want to go for uh, Reaver Jet Bikes, not for Hellions. I want to go for Reaver Jet Bikes. Um, mainly because, um, how should I say, my my favorite build is the Dark, not the Dark, the Warrior Spam. But as the Thousand Sun rubrics are heavy infantry and are also um, morale immune, unbreakable you could say, um, there's no real, how should I say, no real deal in uh, getting, getting uh, it to work. I tried it once, I don't know if it was Kukai or someone else, but yeah, uh, no real uh, reason to go for um, warriors with uh, special weapons. Um, yeah, I leave one point for capping for my first Hellion squad. Um, we will see in this game how useful the first Hellion squad really can be. So um, never skip it, I would say. Get my points up, can uh, build them immediately, go to the next point, build up, so and so forth. And the uh, um, Hemionculus lab is pretty much uh, good timing for your first Hellion squad to be out without having to, um, how should I say, delay your um, first jet bike much. I delay it a bit so I can get this tow up so it cannot be decapped. So normally I would wait, get the first um, jet bike out and then build it as soon as the um, worker is there. Then you ha would have the 80 for the jet bike and the jet bike would be out by now. But I didn't want to have my point decapped so I um, chose that to do. My first Hellions have finished capping their uh, point and now uh, tying up the Sorcerer Lord. I'm not sure why he runs away. He normally is superior, superior in melee with his stun stunning ability, so a little miss play here, I suppose. But um, now the first jet bike is out and he runs away. Jet bikes doing not the biggest amount of damage, so don't get overzealous with your first bike. You want to have at least two or three before doing stuff, and you want to have. Um, uh, the, you don't, I would say the perfect number, the best number in tier 1 is 6. So you want to have one um, cap increasing building. I forgot the name of um, So Hellion squad almost down, but I'm. they are still alive. They are. Um, I even use my Mentrix here to tie up these uh, Rubik Marines to get, um, get my jet bikes uh, free fire. Now I have three jet bikes and to get the next one I will get need um, more vehicle cap. You will see me putting down a torture chamber or a slave chamber, whatever it's called, uh, momentarily. I think I put it down here, yes. It's a slave chamber, of course. I notice here that there are warp mines, so I don't want to go in there, so I shoot them from afar. And now they are um, built, um, how should I say, the, the building time finishes, so they uh, there's no real reason for me to go there. I could use the Invis detection ability, maybe it would have been a good choice indeed. Um, my Hellions are busy capping the middle while my now four jet bikes move over to the other side where I this time catches the mines before they get built. Um, there are some rubrics coming in I just noticed and now I'm focusing down the Silver Spire here. Building more Reaver jet bikes, getting another gen up to uh, uh, be able to tech up. I see some Rubik's here, so I use my Hellions again to tie up one squad and use my jet bikes to shoot them from afar. This is, uh, they have the wrong stance for now. Um, Doombolts doesn't seem to do a whole lot against vehicles. Um, but yeah, this uh, Rubik Marines just standing there firing isn't the best. I even have uh, the Helyark, he's called now, to um, get some vision on these. It's the vision. Uh, stays up for quite some time, but I actually killed the model. A bit of a slug fight here. Kukai tries to engage here. I use my Hellions in melee. I lose one Hellion. I lose another one. These are not cheap to reinforce, but I uh, keep one squad tied up. 
magically reinforcing one before I uh, lose almost every one one uh, guy is still there but uh, yeah he will he will survive I killed probably a full squad of Rubik's here oh no one also one model only surviving interesting but now I, I have diminished the numbers quite a bit so I try to go for the silver spire once again having my man tracks here one man track even attacking the other silver spire here so keeping them alive is pretty good um, I have enough resources for tier 2 now I should should do that and I do haven't upgraded a single tower yet but I will do in the process of going to uh, tier 2 in the meantime you could say building another gen who is uh, up here replacing the river jet spikes that I have lost and now comes the first and not the first but the biggest misplay of my part I think uh, I, I I thought I can go in here and brute force this uh, silver spy here to uh, reduce the economy of Kuka even more. What I totally forgot or just ignore is that there is uh, some mines here that will do hell of a lot of damage in conjunction with the silver spy doing also quite a lot of damage. Um, I should have used the true side ability of course to um, kill the minefield from afar and then move in. So this is a big misplay here. I lose more stuff than I should. I lost three or even four jet bikes here, which is bad. You normally want to keep your jet bikes alive um, when heading tier two, so you don't have to place replace them. So you have more resources and can immediately start the uh, river jet bike upgrade once you hit tier two. This time I used uh, the tracking device on the right target, which is the saucer lord who is uh, bound to survive uh, a lot longer than your standard rubrics, of course. I notice no no uh, aspiring sorcerers here. Interesting. But okay, he is now attacking this uh, Tower of Low thing, and I upgrade both here to defend. And my hero jet bikes come from the other side. My um, Hellions come in from the other side. This is you. You cannot stay here with them. You need to go out to so just um, tie them up to save some time before your point get up. And now this point is up and starts firing move them away again so it's a constant uh, back and forth here and um, I am tier 2 already and now get targeting module which increases the uh, uh, DPS of your river jet bikes like quite a lot uh, especially while on the move um, while on the move it's quite a big um, while standing it isn't as much indeed having now um, the tower of low thing on both sides here will help me to defend I have no upgrade here yet so I'm standing here holding my ground and I want to fight within the firing arc of the Tower of Loathing. I don't want to fight in, uh, with the Rubik's in this heavy cover. So I... Do I decide it right now? Yes, I do decide to attack the other side again probably. I have now also poison weapons for my uh, Hellions research and uh, the Tarkin module. So having even some minor upgrades for your Hellions can help. Um, po uh, how should I say? Poison blade is something you will uh, almost always want. I also get the witch cult arena and some another slave chamber to get some um, more pop cap here, so I can then get um, venoms out. Venoms are really strong tier 2.5 uh, vehicles, and the natural um, how should I say conclusion: once you need have the hem homunculus lab anyway for your river jet bikes, you then can go for the venoms because you need a witch cult arena and a homunculus lab for them so having the homunculus lab and the um, dark foundry already makes it natural to get for the witch cult arena and a venom um, or two probably better to have two I have my points here now uh, upgraded income is really good so far even have upgraded uh, this one here no upgrades for the other ones and the first venom is out the second venom it's not ready yet I would need another slave chamber here and I see an attack coming in from this side I lose my slave here but now I have an idea where the enemy is there are two two squads of Rubik's three even now one two three three squads of Rubik Marines and uh, I decide to um, attack them I have a venom I have Weaver jet bikes, I have a Hellion way. Yet yeah, another one is uh, almost there if I had enough vehicle um, cap, that is. 
Now standing here in the heavy cover, I'm I'm not sure if the jet bike is affected by cover, but I would uh, suppose so. I have now two venoms here. These are mainly anti-infantry. They can get a what is it called? A heat lance to get some anti-building, anti-vehicle. Heat lance is not as effective as your dark lance, I think. Having a little, how should I say? Uh, coil um, targeting ability, what is it called? Root ability here, but Mahalian's surviving for now, tying up, buying time. Should get the armor upgrade for them, I think, to make them more durable. Don't need to have any, um, how should I say, damage increasing abilities, but um, they are for tying up, so they need more health. But <coughs> I have lost them for now, but I have replaced them, more or less replaced them by Rex, and Rex are your tier 2 melee superiority unit they can tank they can dish out they get more um, benefits as I, I told you as the time goes on uh, i have a heat lens from on one of them getting heat lens on the other one and there's a hellblade out hellblade with the best <laughs> voiceover of course and i'm trying to get there with the venoms one got stunned or the bolt of change at least does some damage against the vehicles it's ability from the thrall wizards and my um, wrecks are killing the occult forge. Uh, Reaver jet bikes decapping stuff. I now get the armor upgrade for the wrecks and trying to focus the hellblade with uh, the heat lens. But you can see the heat lens does some damage, but not enough. Um, my both of my um, units get killed. So I have seen that there is a flyer around. The flyer cannot deal with this wrecks. It can deal some damage, but it is not enough. These are uh, infantry, but I guess infantry high. Um, in that having a lot of health health regeneration and these passive traits um, So I am adding or have I already added now? I'm starting to add the uh, dark lens add-ons to my listening post so I can defend against these uh, flyers something really neat for dark elder that they have access to uh, these additional weaponries on their listening post so I fear some how should I say attacks from the flank so I'm uh, building it up but you see by my, my floating quite a lot now i'm getting tier 3 actually getting a uh, soul seeker ammunition and will get uh, once i have finished this hall of blood some scorches out for some mobile anti-vehicle uh, once i'm done being busy here you will see me um, getting two squads out but for now i'm fighting some practical scope and here killing the listing post which was my primary objective running away for now as there is some uh, support there as well. So getting the Soul Seeker ammunition in preparation for the Scorches, it should also affect the Scorch weapons. Now I, uh, the Practical Scoven are now in the firing arc of my Power of Loathing, which has also the Dark Lens, so this is very um, much as I wanted to. Um, so do I fight here actually? Yes, I do. I think these guys are just good enough. There are even some Chosen coming in, so once these Chosen arrive, it, uh, they should retreat, I think. Although Rex are really, really strong, especially with the upgrades I have for them. Um, having one squad of Scorches out now, getting the second squad out to get something on the field to deal with this Hellblade. Um, I cannot play passively here, I need to take it down. But you, and you generally see that I have taken um, the points from uh, Kuka here now, so it's uh, my game to lose, you could say. I have the the, up, the upper hand here. And yeah, I have these upgraded points here and rack support. And also the Scorches are moving in slowly. I uh, sadly go for Heat Lenses. I should go for Dark Lenses as they are, as they seem to be super superior against vehicles. Flying them in, getting a few shots in. And you see the heat lenses do not much, but I, I do jump after them again and will get hopefully rid of this air blade. Not for now, but as soon as it is in the range of my tower of closing, it will die. So I uh, decide as my jumps are out now, I can just stay here and take down the silver spire. Here on this side, um, the Rex with their now uh, Echo Fist leader who buffs the squad even more. Just look at the health. Um, yeah, and I'm tier 3, so what do you do in tier 3? You get all your uh, cool units out. It's the Trueborn, it is a Razor Wing Jet Fighter, it is 
once I have to pop grotesques and think they will get out once I lose this mandrakes here. But you can see the writing is on the wall. The game is um, basically one. I have all the tier three stuff out while uh, Kukai has nothing really to fight. Yeah, so <laughs> still well played from him as well. Um, he is not very, how should I say, keen of river jetbikes and vehicles in tier one. You will see the writing here, but um, he played well. I think I played well as as well. So. I, I'm glad I'd, I could show you a game that was a little longer and was really fun to play and uh, see here again. So this will uh, conclude the guide for Dark Elder. If you have anything to add, if I have told you some wrong stuff and you know it better, please put it in the comments. <coughs> I'm also counting on you, Neon, to put additional details and whatnot in, uh, the, in the comment. And yeah, as usual, guys, Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.